second talk this morning, which is also our last talk today, is by Rodrigo Botel Ribeiro from IMPA, and he'll be talking about building your path to escape from home. Hello. Oi, oi. Bom. Uh, so, first of all, thank you to the organizer for this opportunity. Uh, well, having this opportunity to talk about mathematics to this incredible audience is amazing. So, I'd like to say that I'm very happy to be here today and to talk about this joint work with this bunch of nice guys here uh, Daniel Ribeiro, Julio Iacobelli. Ribeiro, no, Ribeiro sou eu. Uh, <laughs> that's me. Okay. Uh, then again, again. Uh, it's a joint work with Daniel Figueiredo, Julio Iacobelli, Roberto Oliveira, and Bruce Reed. So uh, this talk is, is divided in, into several moments here. On the first moment, I'll be talking about uh, the model that inspired uh, this work. So actually, uh, in this work, we study a modification of this, of this round the walk, of this model here. And then I'll give you two motivations to why we should care about this this model and its modifications. And then finally, I will define the model we study here and discuss the, the results we have about it. And if time allows me, uh, give some the essential ingredients needed for the proofs we gave. So, OK. So what is this thing of no restart on the walk? So it's, it's quite simple. It was proposed by Amorim Figueiredo Jacobelli Negli last year. So you fix an inter S, and we start with a finite rooted tree and the walker at some vertex of this tree. Okay? And then uh, you let the walker take S steps on the current graph. And after this S steps, you add and connect a new leaf to the current location of the walker. So then we iterate this process going back to the step one. So summarizing, at each step, at, at S steps of the walker, the walker modifies its environment, adding a new, a new leaf to the current graph. OK? So very simple. Uh, OK, so why you should care about a model of this type and one modification, of, a possible modification of this model? So the first reason uh, comes from the graph's perspective. So, it's related to, uh, to modeling concrete networks. So, uh, well, in most random graph models which evolve according to the preferential uh rule, a new vertex, at each step you add a new vertex to the network, and this new vertex may connect itself to any other vertex on the network. So this new guy here, somehow it has a global knowledge on the, of the, the network. So you may think of this, this model, if you think of the sequence of random trees, you may think this as an attempt of producing graphs with the same nice properties we see here, but avoiding this, this global knowledge. So we would like to produce graphs with very nice properties, but by some local rule. OK? So this is the first reason. And the, the second reason uh, comes from the walker's perspective. So you may see this model now as a, a model of a random walk on a random environment. And the walk can change its environment and can modify, the, modify this, 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 the, underlying, the underlying graph in a very simple way. So in this, here you can. Here you can ask a lot of questions about the, from the walker's perspective. OK? So now I'm, I'm going to, to introduce the model we, we study in this, in, the, in this work. So as I've said, it's a modification of the no restart on the walk. So its dynamic is also pure simple. So you fix a. Um, parameter p between 0 and 1. And we start with, uh, with your favorite rooted finite tree TO and the walker at some point XO of this, of this tree TO here. OK, so then with probability p, 
you add and connect a new leaf to the current location of the walker. Then you let the walker take one step on the current graph. And then you iterate this going back to step one. So summarizing, the walker flips a coin and decides, according to this coin, whether uh, it modifies the, the, the environment, adding a new leaf to its current position, and then it, it performs one step on the possibly updated graph. OK? Fine. So we use this notation here to denote the process. So here is a random tree, and here is the position of the walker on the tree TN. So as I've said, uh, we, here we are interested on uh, questions on the walker perspective. So we'd like to see this model as a model of a random walk. So the f one of the natural questions you can ask is about recurrence and transients. So uh, for the first case, p equals 1 is the same that the model with the s steps. So um, Amorim, Figueiredo, Jacobelli, and Negle um, proved that for all initial conditions, DO and XO, actually the, this process is transient. So the probability of visiting the root infinitely often is 0 for any initial condition you, you set here. And then we generalize this for all values of P by actually proving that the walker is moving away from the root at linear speed. So uh, for any initial condition you, you have and any values of P here, there exists a, a positive constant dependent only on P, only on P, so that the distance of the walker from the root at time n divided by n, so this converts almost surely to this positive constant here. So, of course, this implies that the walker is, is transient, but actually, the walker is moving very fast away from the root. Here we have a four realization of the process for different values of p. Um, as you can see, when p is close to 1, the, the tree looks like a very, very long path. On the other hand, when p is close to 0, the, the tree has some structure. It's more ro robust in some sense. So, uh, of course, we should observe something like this, because re recall that this p here is the probability of adding a new, a new vertex, a new leaf to the tree. So if p is, is a small, the, in average, the, the walker takes 1 over p steps until it adds another leaf. So it has, so if you observe, suppose you have the walker walking here, and he just added a new leaf here, then it takes, in average, 1 over p steps, so now the, 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 the tree is frozen, and then it has enough time to go inside the, inside the tree, wondering about the meaning of his life, and then add a new, a new leaf. OK. Uh, so again, thinking about the, the walker's perspective, uh, we'd like to understand actually what the, what the walker sees around it at distance r. So we fix here, uh, we may fix, we keep tracking of balls of radio r of the, around the, the walker. So you'd like to understand how does the trees around this, the walker looks like. At least give some hints about it. So, uh, before we jump into the, the theorems, we have some uh, def quick definitions, just to show that uh, we are on the same page. So we say that two rooted graphs, G and H, are rooted isomorphic or simply isomorphic. If there exists a graph, isomorphism between uh, G and H, taking the root of G to the root, to the root of H. 
And then we can talk about this, the set of all rooted locally finite graphs up to uh, rooted isomorphisms. Okay. Uh, so here we have a key definition. Uh, the concept of uh, the local function. So we say that this function psi on the set of all rooted local finite graphs uh, and to the real line is a R local function if there exists a positive integer R such that we, if, whenever you have uh, two rooted graphs and uh, satisfy this condition here, then the function is, takes the same value on both graphs. What is happening here? So suppose we have uh, two rooted graphs. They may be very complicated. So here is G, V. And here you have, we have H, U. But then we have the, this, the ball around the root of radius R, rooted on V, of course, and the same here. U. So, if these two neighborhoods here are the same, so the function psi is the same, takes the same values for, so psi of G, U, V is the same of psi of H, U. So actually, this kind of function uh, only cares about what happens around the, the root of the graph. Okay, so just to, uh, as a simple example, just to clarify the, the definition, this simple function here that gives us the degree of the, of the root is a one local function. So what do you know about um, local functions? Uh, well, for all bounded R local function and all initial condition, actually the, the average of the psi for, of any bounded local function evaluated on tk and xk, this limit here converges to a constant that actually depends only on the function and the parameter p. So it does not depend on the initial condition to and xo. So this is um, very abstract, but Let's uh, see this from a more concrete uh, context. So fix your favorite finite rooted tree, OK? And in the radius R. And define this function here. So the indicator function of that the neighborhood, the neighborhood of radius R, so the ball around the, the root of G of radius R is equal to R favorite tree here. So this kind of, this function here gives us one, whenever this, this, this ball around the root is the tree we have chosen. So whenever, if this, if you see TV here, so psi is one, okay? So, and this is, uh, of course, this is uh, our local function and this is bounded, so we, we are on the hypothesis of our theorem. So actually, if you plug this function on this, on the sum here, what you have is actually, we are counting how many times the walker sees this particular tree. So, and our theorem is telling that the proportion of time X sees T around it this is conversion to some constants that actually depends only on the tree and on the parameter P. Um, okay. So uh, uh, observe here that this constant here uh, does not depend on the initial condition. So somehow the, the walker manages to forget to forget about uh, its initial condition, its in initial tree TO. So, well, I have uh, 
I have some slides here about the essential ingredients, but uh, I think I will wait for the questions and maybe talk about this as you demand for it. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> now, I'll talk about it, okay. Um, about at least give you some hints why we have this, uh, this linear speed here. So is it, somehow it's a bootstrap argument. So you have, first of all, you have to assure that you achieve at least log n distance. So this, this first lemma here, it's, it's trivial. Uh, because, well, observe that the probability of the walker at time n, given all your knowledge up to time n minus 1, the probability of the walker jumps down. It's bounded away from 0 by p over 2. Down, move down, one step down. Yeah, away from the root. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you have the. It's a three chip Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the root, the root is here. The, it's upside down. So the probability that the walker uh, goes one step moves one step away from the root, it's at least this. Because, well, the, the worst case will be if the walker was on a, on a leaf, right? So actually, you, with probability p, you add a new leaf here, and then with probability one half, you jump to it. So you increase your distance from the root. So if you give the walker time enough, you observe that actually, it takes a um, log n steps down in a row. So at some point, what you see is something like this. The worker here, and this is a distance, a constant times log n. So the next step is, so you'd like to take advantage of this, this distance to actually increase the distance of the walker from the root. So uh, this is done by the, the second lemma, which is uh, a little more, in, more involved somehow, but actually proves by some, some sort of induction that if you have this distance, actually we can achieve a distance by log 1 plus 9 to 9 over 10. So you'd like to use this distance and prove that somehow the, the walker increase its distance by, by this amount here. So this theorem, this, the second lemma here is telling us that actually we can put any, you can, we can consider any power of log here. So we, we can achieve powers of log distance from the, from the root, okay? Then we would, of course, we would like to use this. And then you combine this lemma with this theorem here. So this, this theorem is telling us that actually the, the walker takes too long to, to go up. So if you have, I don't know where it's, So if you have this initial condition here and some guy y here at distance um, l, okay? So this, the theorem is, is telling us that actually the, the, the walker takes more than exponential of square root of l to be, to go from here to here. And then if you combine this, so we, we achieve long distance and then uh, it's too expensive to go up. So before you go, we go from here to here, actually the, 
the walk managed to create, to increase its distance again by another power of log. So it, it goes away from, from the root. So uh, the proof of this theorem is we simplify. So suppose you have, we have some trees here. We simplify this process so you can, we ignore everything is happening outside this path here and we cut off all the vertices of distance at least uh, two from this path here. So this becomes this here, here, here. This is zero and L. And all the, the leaves becomes a loop. So we compare the walk, the walker with a, with a process which we call the loop process. So it is a simplification of our process. This is the X loop walker. So this is a simplification of a process. And this process here, at each step, the X loop walker adds a loop on this line here. And then at each step, if the X loop walker is here, then we, uh, it chooses a, a uniform edge of the current node here and walk through it, okay? So just a hint why you should expect something like exponential. Well, if you visit the, this guy here uh, with degree d, d, with degree d, you have probably one over d to jump back to the line. So in average, you spend time d on this, on this guy here. And then, of, of course, since we have um, probably the p to add a new loop on, on, to, uh, on this guy, so we, when you leave this, you leave this vertex with degree d plus p times d. So every time you visit this guy, when you leave, you leave this with degree, you multiply by a factor of 1 plus d, the degree. And then if you look this process only when it walks on this line here, it looks like a simple random walk on this line here. So it visits this guy uh, in average L times. So when you finally achieve this, you, you have visited this L times. So the degree of this guy here is 1 plus p to the L times some initial degree d0 here. So when you, when you reach zero, the degree of this guy is in average exponential. So actually the X loop spent uh, exponential time on this, on this guy here. So you can couple these two process in such a way that the, the, the loop walker is always close to the zero, then the, the walker is to, the, to this guy Y here. So then we can derive this, the theorem here. So if you, again, we combine this, this theorem with this. So before the walker goes from here to here, actually it has enough time to create another path and go away from the, from the root. Okay? And why, why we observe some sort of local uh, observe that all the theorems that I said, as I said, uh, it forgets about the, the initial condition. Why you observe something like this? Um, I'm stating uh, part of the, the theorem is this approximated uh, renewal lemma here. Uh, well, the, the key point is that doesn't, uh, doesn't matter your initial condition, at some point what you see is the walker, that the walker creates a path here of length r, for example, and, and it is on the tip of this, of this long length here. And this, length, and, and this path is long enough so that the walker doesn't go back anymore. And it, actually, you don't have to expect some uh, long time to observe something like this. 
Because recall that the, the, the walker is moving away from, from the root to, uh, too fast, so actually the, you, can con, uh, you can control the, the maximum degree of these trees. So to create something like this, suppose you are on the very high degree here, with, with probability p you create uh, another leaf, and with probability 1 over the maximum degree, you jump to this leaf and pay some prices p over 2 to r minus r to be on the tip of this length here. So the, the walker is forgetting about its initial condition. And then actually we compare uh, the, our, our process by a refreshed process starting from, from this initial condition, just uh, length and the walker on the tip of it. Okay. Yeah. At this point, I should ask if Yuval's question has been answered. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Sorry? The uh, he asked if you can prove monotonicity of the speed. Does the speed grow with P? And are there any estimates? Yeah, uh, one trivial is P, <laughs> right? One trivial bound on the, uh, let me, yeah, uh, where is my theorem? Yeah. Are you asking about some monotonicity on this? on this constant here, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, well, I, I haven't think about it, but probably it's, it's monotonic but on P. Monotonic, <laughs> yeah, we have, some, we have some bounds. We have some bounds on the... Often, often all the bounds are monotonic, but the mean is something Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have some bounds, but we... we Actually, we, we didn't care to, uh, we'd like just to prove that the, the, the velocity, the speed was linear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> and the other question is, do you understand how they, they, they grow from the tree in the case of the No, actually, actually, no. But it seems a nice question, too. So. Yeah, I thought about it ju just to uh, wait to, well, somehow uh, we are trying to, to, to stop the, the, the walk to reduce this speed here. But I, I actually don't have, a, I don't know how to prove this. And More questions? Ah, okay. Are you saying that some uh, probably to create a uh, some some connection or Apparently, we have decided that we can have a whole uh, problem session about this specific model and its variants. 
But before we get into that, we probably should thank the speaker again. Thank you.